Well, hello and welcome to the channel. I'm glad you could join me for this video. Now, this is going to be part two of our PT-109 Patrol Torpedo Boat by Ravel in 172 scale. And in this video, we're going to be doing the painting. So the first thing we need to do is get everything ready for paint. So we're going to start that off with disassembling all the dry fitted items uh, that we have previously assembled. Uh, now, if you've seen part one, you know that we kind of did this model with uh, sub-assemblies here. And so we're just going to disassemble everything that's going to need to be painted. It's easier to paint these items <laughs> if they're not all glued on. That way we can reach uh, those little areas that are difficult to get to. And it should also help us with our uh, weathering. Uh, process as well. Now the key to a successful paint job is all about the preparation. Number one, you're going to want to make sure that the surface is clean, free from all those uh, little particles of dust and everything from the fitting and sanding of the parts. Um, also it's a good idea to go over it with, uh, I used a myself a cotton swab and a little bit of rubbing alcohol to make sure that there's no uh, grease and oils from my fingers on the parts and then I do go in and wash my hands so that they're nice and dry and clean before I start uh, preparing the parts for painting and there's a lot of different ways you can do that as you can see here I've used alligator clips and a little bit of double stick uh, mounting tape and then also I'm going to use some of this uh, painter's mask. Now this is the purple painter's mask. It's not real sticky. That way I don't have to worry about bending or breaking parts when I try to take it off the, the tape. But by fixing the little bitty loose parts that are really hard uh, to put a clamp on or hold, I can um, spray these without too much difficulty. And as you can see here, uh, they don't, they're not falling off, so we should be able to get some paint on those parts. Now with our superstructure for our boat, uh, there are these contact areas uh, where I want it to glue up nice and solid when I do the final assembly. So what I'm going to do is just take this one millimeter wide uh, Tamiya mass tape here, and I'm just going to put them down inside these grooves. It, it fits really nice here and I don't have to do a lot of cutting and trimming and that's a good thing uh, and we'll just cover up these areas so that we don't get paint down in them so the first thing we need to paint is the interior parts and for that we're going to use this surface primer from Vallejo this is white and we're going to thin that uh, with our airbrush so I painted that stuff up but I, I didn't show you me spraying those parts. What we're looking at here is the color uh, of the boat. And so I do have some craft paint here. And this is nautical blue. And I am going to thin it just a little bit with the airbrush thinner uh, from Vallejo, this, which is water-based. And these acrylic paints are water-based. Now I'm going to use this nautical blue to uh, paint these decks for our interior cabin areas here. Uh, and that'll give me a pretty good idea if that's the color that I want to use later on for the exterior. So next up we're going to use some Vallejo uh, German Panzer Gray. Uh, in place of black, because Ravel calls out black for these uh, cushions on the uh, benches, or couches, <laughs> I'm not sure uh, what they'd be classified as. Uh, we're just going to call them benches. And so we're going to paint these up and there's not much else to do inside the cabin. So next up we're going to take a little bit of wood. Now this is Model Masters acrylic and we are doing the ladder. Uh, so it has two ladders. Uh, we're going to paint both those with the acrylic wood just to kind of give a little bit of color deviation there down inside. I really don't think much of this is ever going to be seen, but um, we'll find out uh, once it's fully assembled. 
I am using a little bit of the alcohol. This is rubbing alcohol in a Q-tip. And I'm just going to clean off the mating areas uh, where we're going to glue these interior parts to the, uh, to the deck. So first up is the chart room, I think is what it's called. <laughs> you guys can correct me on that. Uh, so we're going to glue that up and then uh, this cabin area. We're going to go ahead and glue that to the bottom of the deck. And since these parts go in from the underside, of course we had to paint those first. So you can see here I have uh, actually went in and painted the uh, uh, those little boxes and stuff that's sitting on the main deck which is in the chart room. And now we're just going to attach uh, the main deck to the hull. I'm using the Tamiya mass tape here for that. Now we're going to want to make sure that this is really secure and it's in place because the next thing up is to glue this into place. And we don't want it moving on us. Now it is a really good fit so we shouldn't have any issue. But since that deck is kind of bowed, it bows up in the center, uh, we want to make sure that it's nice and flush uh, with that top edge of the hull. Now we just come in with a little bit of to me Extra Thin and let it run right along the seam there. Lucky for us, the tape is actually up off of that seam. That seam's kind of rebated uh, away from the uh, from the side, so it's not a big issue to get the glue in there. Now we're going to let that set up really good before we uh, take the tape off. Now the next thing we're going to do is come in and tape off these areas that um, we painted up. <laughs> uh, since we had to install them before attaching the deck, and I didn't want to paint the deck uh, separately from the hull, I wanted to paint that as a unit, uh, we have a little bit of masking job to do here just to make sure that we don't get any overspray down into the cabin areas here. Now I've also painted the interiors uh, of these superstructures, um, the uh, Vallejo white as well, and I'm just going to come in and mask up over top of the ports, uh, portals or windows or <laughs> whichever it is, I'm not sure uh, what you would call it on a boat. Huh, I'm, we're going to go with portals, what do you think guys, portals? Anyway, we're going to mask over these so we don't get any overspray into the interior and we'll be able to keep that nice and pristine and white and just for good measure we're going to go ahead and uh, mask up the uh, the bottom area here so we don't get any overspray inside the cabin as well and now we can do all the exterior surfaces so we're going back to this uh, Vallejo surface primer white and we're just going to prime everything with that. So I start with the bottom of the hull and of course the sides and we're going to want to get us a, a good coat of that primer um, right onto the hull surface. Now we can set this aside and uh, allow that to dry while we work on the other small parts, the superstructure and what have you. Um, and then by the time we get around to coming back to that, we can do the deck. Here we're doing the front superstructure area here. And you just want to make sure that you get everything covered with the primer. It doesn't have to be spot on. This is not the final, uh, uh, final paint job for, for our vessel. We just want to make sure that we get everything covered. Uh, that way we can go on with our pre-shading because we are going to do some pre-shading on this boat. And here we're doing our torpedo tubes. Uh, we have four of these to do. Uh, and we do want to make sure that we get a nice good overall coat on these and it can be a little tricky with those braces on the bottom of it, but uh, we can get in there. 
And now we can come back and do our deck. Just want to make sure that we get everything covered and then we're going to be ready for our next step. Now we're ready for our appreciating and we're going to use this German Panzer Gray for that. This is a the Vallejo uh, water-based acrylic. And of course it's mixed up for the airbrush. So I come in first where all the superstructures are going to uh, be where they're going to make contact with the deck here. And I'm just going to outline that with the uh, Panzer Gray. And then any of the other protruding parts on the on the upper deck here we're going to uh, go ahead and, and shade those in and once we get all those protruding areas there uh, pre-shaded we're going to come back in and do a little bit of well I don't know what the pattern would be called a little bit of squirrely uh, zigging and zagging <laughs> across the, the the main deck here and we'll do this on the uh, sides of the hull as well these areas are really flat um, and they don't have much detail in them so in order to give us a little bit of color variation there uh, and make a little bit more interest uh, in the paint job uh, when we get our top color coat on uh, this pre-shading here will help add those little areas of interest. A little bit of detail there uh, that you wouldn't otherwise have. And that's the good thing about uh, pre-shading. Uh, it's easy to go back and fix it, whereas when you lay your main color, uh, your top color down, it's much more difficult if you're doing post-shading. So I just feel more comfortable myself with pre-shading. Uh, I can fix my mistakes <laughs> uh, a lot more readily. Uh, now here you can see that I'm concentrating um, on uh, darkening up the very bottom of these superstructures and I if you remember I also did that around the areas on the on the deck that way we'll have a pretty good uh, color match when we go to do the final assembly on this um, that way we have a good transition um, between those parts at least that's my thought process I guess we're going to find out after it's painted uh, so here we are with our pre-shading uh, we also appreciated our um, torpedo tubes as well kind of looks like a Dalmatian doesn't it so now the next thing that we need to look at here is the water line and the whole red uh, that's on the bottom of our boat. So what I have here is a scribing tool. Now I got this specifically uh, for marking this water line on this vessel. Um, hopefully it'll come in handy for others. But the very bottom of it really wasn't, um, well it wasn't flat. So I actually took this thing apart and flat sanded it so that uh, it would be nice and flat across the bottom and it wouldn't rock back and forth. So it is adjustable here, you can see that, and uh, we'll be able to set a specific height and all we gotta do is tighten up the, uh, the thumb screws here. This one has a bail on it and it is nice and, and solid. And then we do have a little thumb screw here to adjust our pencil. So this is a scribe. It also comes with a couple other attachments, but the only one I'm interested in is the pencil. And we're going to use this to mark uh, our water line. So here we have our stand. And on the back, it has a square notch cut out. Well, it's not really square, but it's a notch. And on the front, it's just the V-groove there. On the bottom of the hull, you can see we have a block. And then we have a couple of tabs. And that way you can't get the boat on the stand uh, backwards. Apparently Ravel knows me pretty good, so <laughs> they made it dummy proof. <laughs> so uh, Now the good thing about this stand is that it actually holds the vessel or the boat uh, level with the water line. And we're going to use that to our advantage here. 
So that's going to help us uh, achieve uh, the water line that we want to put. So all we really need to do is get this thing adjusted uh, right where we want the water line to go. And of course we use our uh, painting schematic air to clue us in to where we want that line to start. And then just uh, tighten everything up so that uh, we can go ahead and start scribing. Now with everything all set up, um, we can just go ahead and very lightly trace uh, the line right onto the hull. And it is important to hold the boat down so that it doesn't move away, <laughs> of course. We don't want to be chasing it across our desktop here. Now the one thing that I will say is that when it comes to scribing the line up underneath the bow of the ship, uh, you want to go very lightly because of the the way the uh, bow is shaped there, it's going to want to force the scribe up underneath the vessel and you won't get a good clean line. So just very, very lightly trace that and go over it several times. We just want to make sure that we can see it. And as you can see here across the stern of the vessel, we can see our scribe line. And also down the side of the boat as well. So now we got a nice guide for uh, masking. Uh, we'll be able to mask that up without any issues, I hope. So when it comes to these curved surfaces, uh, it's easier to use this uh, one millimeter wide uh, Tamiya mask to get right on our scribed line here for painting uh, the water line. The, the thicker uh, masking tapes, they, they don't really bend, so we're just going to take and put this on first, and then we can mate up to that with the thicker uh, masking tape. And with the masking tape on all the way around our scribed line, I do come in and just lightly press uh, the edge of the mask right where uh, the paint is going to stop. That way, hopefully, we don't have any, any paint seeping up underneath the edge uh, of our mask. Now, I'm not real good with uh, keeping control of the paint, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, a little extra precautionary step here is to uh, add a little bit of uh, paper towel here, just tape it up to the side to protect the side of uh, the vessel from uh, overspray. Uh, we don't want to start messing with uh, all of our pre-shading there. So we're just going to go ahead and protect that. So with everything masked off, we're ready for our whole red. I don't have whole red, so we're going to use this uh, true red and also uh, red rust. So true red and red rust mixed at a 50-50, well, as close to 50-50 as possible. Um, it's, you know, it's Hillbilly uh, Paint Chemistry 101, so close is good for me. <laughs> so, uh, and these, these craft paints are really thick, so it is kind of difficult uh, to get an exact measurement on them without thinning them. So now we're ready to spray, and uh, we're just going to build up uh, the paint. We're going to go on really light and we'll have to go several passes of course and allow the paint to uh, to darken as we go the biggest thing being is that we really don't want to totally obliterate all of our pre-shading and that's pretty much the deal anytime you've got pre-shading uh, you don't want to lay the paint on so thick and heavy uh, that all that extra work that you went to uh, disappears And it will develop slowly, so you just got to be patient and just put the paint on. And we're about where we need to be. Now we let that whole red dry completely. Uh, and then it's time to go ahead and remove all the mask from it. And our uh, waterline come out really nice. Uh, I'm impressed. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> kind of surprised that's worked out for us. All right, so the next thing we need to do is to actually reverse mask uh, what we did before. So we're just going to use the water line as uh, the line that we need to mask, but now we're just going to cover up uh, all of our whole red. And that's going to protect it from overspray uh, from when we paint uh, the uh, gray onto the upper portion of the hull. So I've decided that we're going to use charcoal and then nautical blue to make up the exterior color. The nautical blue is just really too, too blue for, for my taste anyway. So uh, we're going to mix these 50-50 and then thin it for the airbrush. And then we're going to do the exact same thing that we did um, when we were painting our whole red on. Only this time uh, we're using our gray mixture here, our blue-gray, and we're just going to lightly um, layer with many passes uh, this gray. We don't want to take and obliterate, you know, all that pre-shading, uh, same process. Uh, we just want to make sure that we get everything covered and we do end up with a gray boat. Once all that's dry, uh, we can go ahead and take all of our mask off. And then we get down to that moment where uh, we find out if our masking did the job that it was supposed to do. And we actually come out with a really nice waterline, so that's nice. That works. And now we can start concentrating on all of the little details. Um, the knobs here on the ship's wheel is supposed to be black. I am just going to use the uh, Vallejo Panzer Gray. Um, it gives the impression of being black. Also, we're going to use that for the cushions, the, or, or the seat backs here, and the uh, gunner's cupolas. And we have two of those to paint up. And we're also going to use the same Panzer Gray here for uh, the metal work. Uh, that's not a gaff. What is that? A grapple? Uh, but anyway, we also have these two cranks here. Um, on top of the uh, cabin area. Now these cranks were used to crank out the torpedoes into the launch position to move the torpedo tubes out. Uh, they're probably gray on the real vessel but uh, we would like to have a little bit of detail there. And I do come in and shade in the, uh, uh, the ship's horn. And there's a couple of uh, switches that Ravel wants us to paint black as well. Here we're going to use this uh, metallic bronze, which is also a craft paint, water-based. Easy cleanup. And we're going to paint um, our propellers with it. Now, it will have to have two coats, but uh, that's okay. It dries pretty quick, so it's not a real issue. And also we need to paint the uh, wooden handle um, for whatever this thing is called. Whoever knows what this is called, go ahead and <laughs> leave me a message. I don't think it's called a gaff. Is it called a grapple? I am kind of curious about that. I need to look that up. But anyway, the handle of it is wood. Uh, however, Ravel only leaves us with one little bracket there. So I'm just going to leave a couple of spaces on it there. Uh, kind of simulate in paint uh, a couple of more brackets holding it uh, to the side of the uh, cabin area here. Now there's also a uh, wooden lattice structure that's in the bottom of the raft. So we go ahead and paint that with the uh, Model Masters wood acrylic as well. So Revel calls out the center 
uh, brace structure here for uh, our twin 50s on the cupolas to be green, OD green. So I'm going to use Vallejo Parch Grass for that, which is a uh, like a sun bleached out OD green. I think it's going to look pretty good there. Um, so Ravel also calls out aluminum to be used on our propeller shafts. Now this is Model Master acrylic, water-based uh, aluminum. So I'm going to use that uh, to paint these shafts with. The only thing is we just need to be really careful that we don't get that on our whole red because that will be somewhat of a problem to try to touch up later if we do. We're also going to use that same aluminum color to paint up the uh, uh, the bulb area on our spotlight and also we're going to use it to paint the antenna um, which is what uh, Ravel calls out for that. So now it's time to work on our exhaust here. Here I've already mounted these mufflers uh, onto the stern section of our boat. Um, I didn't think that was too exciting so <laughs> <laughs> I kind of left that out of the assembly process, but we left them out so that we could get our water line painted. Now these muffler assemblies here have the uh, whole red and uh, painted on the bottoms of them, and we actually have to match uh, as best we can the uh, the water line. For me, I can paint a straight line better in the vertical than in the horizontal because my horizontal line tends to be more of an arc so knowing my limitations I decided to uh, orient the the boat so that it is standing up on its side here now when I go to paint these lines on I need to eyeball straight down the water line on the side of the boat because the stern section kinda cants inward and so these muffler assemblies here are canted as well so if we're not careful, then the water line will end up being too low uh, on the mufflers. So that's the thing we need to watch out for when we go to paint this on. And so we just do the best we can and try to get a straight line. Now with all that little detail painting done, uh, we're going to go ahead and seal everything in with the X22 clear. Now this is a gloss clear and that's going to help us in our next video which is going to be the weathering stage uh, and also uh, the final reveal and you're not going to want to miss that so you guys stay tuned for that uh, if you're new to the channel and uh, you like this kind of content but not a subscriber go ahead and subscribe it's uh, it's free doesn't cost anything and then you're not going to want to miss uh, the next episode for sure uh, make sure that you hit that notification bell so that you'll be sure to catch the final on this boat and also for our next projects coming up as always i want to thank all of my subscribers uh, you guys are great you're the reason why i keep putting out these little videos and i hope you've enjoyed this one and if you'd like to leave me a comment in the comment section uh, i'd be happy to hear from you uh, i'm always glad to hear from you guys and so that's going to wrap this one up and i will see you guys in the next one Y'all stay safe.